Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are gonna be talking about how you guys can make some coins weekly with some weekly trading methods, fluctuating cards on the market. There's cards that move around all the time. I wanna kinda of show you which cards do that and talk through how you can just make some coins. You can do this literally all the time, every week inside of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team to make coins by consistently flipping cards. A lot of people like to invest and wait for cards to go up, but honestly, this is a way where the market is always changing. We have to keep some things in mind in terms of whether what day it is of the week you're trying to be flipping these cards. Um, but, you know, I mean, Regardless, you can do this just about every day in a 24-hour period because cards are constantly fluctuating, especially these out-of-packs cards. But in terms of flipping versus investing, these cards that you're buying that you're going to be flipping, per se, are going to be very short-term holds, and there's a lot less risk, right? There's a lot less risk involved with that, um, and that is why this trading method seems to work really good. And it's you know it doesn't cost you a lot of coins in terms of long-term um like holding on to players because what you're trying to do is buy a player and then sell it within the next 24 hours. That's what I would classify as a flipping, uh, a buy, a flip, right? I don't even want to call it investment because you're not even investing makes it seem like you're going to hold that card for a while. But with these cards, you're not. So I'm going to show you on this game what kind of cards you can be trading with. And it's stuff that we talk about a lot, right? Out of packs, special cards. So informs, team of the group stages, headliners, any of the new, any of the promo teams that are out in this game that are out of packs uh, when you're watching this video. And of course, every single year we have more and more promos and more and more cards that EA puts out in the game. So it makes this type of trading even better. Now at this stage of the game, we're, right now we're in the headliners promo and the market is like in kind of a weird spot. But um, right now, it's like a really, really good time to do this. But also, a lot of people are starting to do this. So, you know, you have to be very quick and find these undercuts using Footbin and just honestly watching cards that you know the price of uh, can make you a lot of coins with this method. So, we've talked about it before, but just again, a refresher on how to do this is you want to find some cards that fluctuate around in price. Going on Footbin teams like this, looking at the players' graphs and saying, hey, this Lukaku card right now uh, is at 215,000 coins. Where did he go yesterday? Yesterday, he was 203 at his lowest, went up to 216 to 219. Today, he's been as low as 211, went to 224, went down to 207, and is now back, was up at 222 and is at 215. So for this Lukaku card, I know that he has been 210,000 coins or below in uh, this time frame today. So we're going to take a look at Lukaku. And if I saw one of these at like 2.0, like there's a 2.16 with an open bid at 184. I'm going to check bids real quick within the next 10 minutes. I don't see any open bids. Uh, boom. Okay. So, you know, like this is a card that, you know, fluctuates around a lot according to his flipping graph. He goes between like 2, 2.05 and 2.20. And as you can see, if you had your card listed at 2.20, there aren't that many that you have to compete with to sell. There's only a few of them at 2.20 here. And maybe yours is a position change or has a good chem style on it. And that might be the difference between your card selling and others not. But that's kind of what we're going for is we're flipping on the hourly. Sometimes in the next 24 hours, if you look at this Lukaku graph, he's hit 224,000 coins twice today. He's also at 207 once. He's hit 212 once. Now we have to, we have to figure in tax here, right? We have to figure in tax because... Every single sale in FIFA, there's a, of course, a 5% tax. So at 5% on 220,000 coins, you have about a 11K tax. So that means when you sell the card at 224,000 coins, you're only going to be getting 211K or so, uh, you know, 213 or whatever, like a minus 11K off of your sell price uh, tax will be taken away. So the actual coins you will get back from that transaction would be about like 212, 211,000 coins, 213K. So you'd actually want to buy this Lukaku around like the 205 range is where I would really want to buy it on a sniper on a bid. Um, and that's like, uh, that way you can actually make coins after tax because it's really easy to do, to do these fluctuations. But if you're not careful, you won't be making coins after tax. This Lewandowski 93 rated card is a perfect example of a flipping investment. 245 to 265 plus each day 267 hit hit that price range like once yesterday today he's hit a high of 269 look at these on the, the xbox as well 264 on the xbox he was 285 earlier in the day 249 to 264 so again you have like 13,000 coins of tax 14,000 coins of tax on this Lewandowski card 
Um, but if you can find fluctuations that are big enough that take that take the tax out of consideration, like right now, it Flippin says that Lewandowski is 270K. He was in the 250s just a little bit ago. Is he actually 270? I'm going to try to check here at the 59th minute. Now, one thing is you have to be very careful with this Lewandowski because the 92 and the 93, their dynamic images look so similar. So you just have to look honestly for the 93, which it looks like Lewandowski is 270 at the moment. Yeah, there's some 270s that are expiring right there. So they didn't pop up at the 59th. There weren't any undercuts. But this is a card that fluctuates a lot because he already has that first inform and you can get lazy buyers, lazy buyers on the market that um, it's hard for them to find a card that has multiple informs to find the higher one. So it's a really easy way to get lazy buyers is by um, listing your, your cards uh, a little bit above their lowest buy now because people actually can't find them. But this Lewandowski is a great one to fluctuation trade with. Now we've just looked at how to do it, right? We've looked at how do you wanna fluctuate trade these cards but let's talk about what cards do you want to look at again? The key thing here is out of packs. And the second key point I want to make is just usable and meta, right? Cards that people want to buy. And we have a way, we've talked about this before in the videos too, is how do you do this on stream? You take a look at cards and how do you know that they're hype? Basically, you look at the games played for these cards. You have to know their rarity too, because rarity is a big factor here. But you can tell the rarity by how much they fluctuate, right? This Lewandowski 93 is a 93 rated inform. It's pretty rare. He's not that expensive though. 270,000 coins for Lewandowski, one of the most well-known prolific strikers in the world. Obviously, he's not super duper meta in FIFA, but he's Bayern Munich and he's got the name, right? He's a very popular player and he's got a lot of thumbs up. We take the hype test, the hype check test a lot on stream. So that would be, again, a very good card to fluctuation trade with. Also from the same team of the week, this Teo Hernandez, left back, uh, 323,000 coins. This guy has only risen since he's gone out of packs. It looks like he's really high right now. Yeah, 323 is near his peak for the day. He was 305 earlier this morning, went to 331, went back down to 316, is now back to 330, and was just 315 a little bit while ago. But just like Lewandowski, this Teo Hernandez is in the same situation where he has multiple informs. So it's a little bit harder to find those undercuts and you can list for lazy buyers and even get more profit. But there's, um, wow. Uh, I think they must've adjusted some price ranges on Teo Hernandez's inform. Cause it's not showing me the 83. If I go over like 200 and what is that? 50 K must be his max price range. And then it only shows me the 86. So 324,000 coins right now for Teo Hernandez as a popular left back in this game. Uh, you want to look at open bids, try to get him under like 310 because you know you can get him at th a sale at 330 most likely, especially if you had like maybe a shadow chem style on this card. Um, you know, maybe try to get him under 310 because you want to make sure you cover your tax and still make profit. But again, that's kind of the whole gist of what we're doing here today. Now, this trading method, now I just bought Kempembe's for 105, 104, and he's up at 109, so we're feeling good about that. Road to the finals are very, very, very rare cards as well. These guys fluctuate a ton. They're very good to trade with. Just, I mean, look at these graphs. We take a look at like Wijnaldum. I'm pretty sure Wijnaldum was like 510 at one point today, earlier. 526, 515. And now he's back up to what? 544. Yes, you have 26, 27,000 coins of tax there. But if you buy the card at 515, you sell it for 550, 560. That's a really, really, really nice flip uh, on a few hour time span. So, these Road to the Finals are very, very good to trade with as well. The Freeze cards are great. Um, Mane fluctuates around a ton. This Bernardo Silva fluctuates around a lot. This Thorgan Hazard is like one of my favorites to actually fluctuation trade with because he goes from like 160, 165 to the mid to upper 180s all the time. 169 here, 185 there. Now, again, you do have almost about... Um, 10,000 coins of tax, you have about 9K of tax per card. But if you're buying at 165 and you're selling at 185, that's a 20,000 coin fluctuation. And you're making about, you know, you're making about 9, 11, 11 to 10,000 coins of profit after tax on a card right there. So that's a really, really nice flip on the hazard. He's a good one to mess around with. Chiellini actually fluctuates around a decent amount too. Um, this team of the week is pretty good. Zaha is a card that moves around a bunch. This Quadrado, this, this Pogba was 385K this morning. He's now 412. So there's some fluctuation there. Also, team of the group stage cards. 
move around a bunch. Big fan of even this Teo Hernandez. This Diego Carlos is great. Um, this Jota and this Pepe are, are guys that I trade around with all the time. So like that's kind of the stuff that you want to be doing um, on this game. Like this is this is this is trading that you can do literally at any time. And one thing I want to mention is if you learn how to trade like this, you can do this at any time of the year with whatever amount of coins you have. You don't have to have a million coins to do this trading method. You don't. You can have a hundred thousand coins, and you could look at informs that are in like the twenty to forty thousand coin range. Flip two or three of those at a time, and continue to build up. Right? You can do stuff like that. This trading method will work with like any sort of budget. That's like one of the best things about this trading method. Now, this Koulibaly card is up a lot right now and EA is kicking me out. But I want to take a look at that Koulibaly because this is a great flipping card as well. Uh, he is 509 at the moment. And I believe he was like 540 earlier today. Yeah, 542 hit his highest. He's been around 500 to 542 since it's a very rare card, but also like a very popular one. He's basically one of the best Serie A center backs and it's cool about it, right? People know who he is in FIFA. Uh, this would be a very good card to trade and it's a very rare road to the final card uh, in the game. This Akanji, now there are some things you have to think about, right? Now, supposedly Akanji is getting a inform this week. I think he was in some of the Team of the Week predictions. Uh, yes, Akanji82 is in Team of the Week predictions. Of course, this road to the final one is 84 rated, so it's a higher rating, but you kind of have to keep that in mind when you are trying to fluctuation trade cards. The only things that can really impact the price on a fluctuation trade would be impending promos, uh, rewards, possibly making the cards go up, actually. And um, knowing if the card is another special item that is coming or like an upgrade, if it's a live item, obviously that's going to make that card trend upwards a little bit more. Um, so like just kind of knowing the general direction of the market is nice. Uh, when you are fluctuation trading these cards um, like I guess you would call these fluctuation trades as well the market usually goes up pretty nice from Sunday night Monday morning into later Monday and into Tuesday I bought this Jamie Vardy Sunday night at 420,000 coins he was low from a little bit of weekend link sell-off and then he went up right same thing with this promise I bought it at 225 230 247 was the sale and all these Jotas were bought at 72 and sold at 77 so I mean you know you do have to keep in mind the general market trends with this stuff. But if you know the trends and if you if you have a solid 12 to 24 hour period where there's not a lot of panic selling or where there's, you know, on the weekend, of course, you might get a few more sales because it's um, it's weekend league time and people are more apt to be buying cards on the market. Um, you know, and if, if there's not a lot of content out that week, like right now for the first week of the headliners promo, it's kind of a slower week. We have one SBC. We had a John Stones SBC today that is causing a few movements on the market. So there's always a little bit of risk with stuff in this game. And a lot of times people will try to, uh, sell their cards that they buy, um, before 6 PM UK, before any new content would come out to try to alleviate some of that risk per se. Um, but you don't have to really worry about too many things when you're trying to trade with some of these out of pack specials like this Jimenez card bounces around a decent amount as well. He's one of the best center backs uh, that links to, um, you know, wrote, or not road to the final, but player of the month, Joao Felix and stuff like that. So, and again, I think I mentioned it just a little bit ago, but if you learn to trade, if you learn to fluctuation trade with these cards, it's basically like you're trading icons as well. If you learn this type of trading, watching graphs go up and down, watching player prices go up and down and, you know, selling them when they're up and buying them when they're low, that's literally, this is icon trading. Uh, fluctuation trading is icon trading as well. So like Promes was 243 earlier this morning. He's back to 267, right? So a lot of times you will see some lower prices in the morning or right around 6 p.m. content time because people will sell things from their teams when they see a new card come out in the game. This Bruno Fernandez is 650. I saw him at 618 earlier this morning. That's a, a flip as well. You could have had 624 and is now up to 650 where he, he was earlier this morning too. So just kind of keep in mind some of those, those normal fluctuations that you do see. This Konate, again, for a low budget card, 27K is a foot bin undercut. But that is very low for this card. He hits 31,000 coins each day. I don't actually know if this Konate is on the market because I could buy it uh, if it was there. But uh, yeah, 
this is basically a trading method that a lot of people do in this game and they do it all the time but it works right it works whoa that was a big undercut on konate and i passed out and missed it please be there still no it's not there dang 25k for konate that was a big time undercut snipe uh right there but as you can see right we saw konate goes between like 27 28k and 31,000 coins and right now he's 30k so he's kind of going upwards towards the top of his, of his fluctuation so if that makes sense to you guys that is a method that you can literally do at any time with any amount of coins if you find the right cards inside of the game and my advice to you would be pick out a few cards right like let's say you look at you're like yo what cards do i look at it's like looking at way too many cards just pick out a handful, right? Pick out a five, six, seven set of cards. Like I watch this Yorente, this Cool Bali, this Akanji, and this Vardy. I watch them really consistently because I know those are cards that I know the prices of. I watch them every day. Just add some cards to your transfer targets, your transfer list. There's a couple undercuts on Vardy here at 455, but he's more like 460. He was 430, 440 earlier this morning. So like I know that I can buy this car when it gets to 430 again, and I'll be able to sell it at like 460. I know that if I see this cool Bali at 470, that's a smashing buy because I might be able to get like 530K as a sale for that card at some point. So just kind of learn a couple cards prices and start there, whatever cards are in your price range and ones that you see that move around well on the market and just flip those on the weekly. So I just wanted to make this extra upload today to kind of talk about that because as we have more and more special cards that come out in this game, it's going to be easier and easier to find cards that constantly move on the market because some cards will get listed up with people finishing, you know, or just listing up a card and nobody wants to buy it in that time frame, So it just kind of fluctuates down. But since these cards are rare, then they'll fluctuate back up as people maybe don't relist the card right away or a couple people go out and buy cards off the market. And then boom, you have a fluctuation there that you can trade with and make sure that you make coins after tax as well. That's the great part about this type of trading is that you can do it at any time with so many different cards that you can stay away from people like a lot of competition. So pick the right cards and you won't have too much competition on this type of trading as well. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I mean, you can do this at any time. So that's why it's a big ups. Um, and I did make a video about this earlier in the year, but now it's such more prevalent because there's way more special cards that are out in the game. So if this helps you at all, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.